Welcome back to Quincy Bolt TV. Thank you, folks, for joining me again. We all good. Today is the review, uh, preview. There's a lot of things coming up this weekend. A lot of things have come up actually this week. Uh, you know, you guys know the big match is coming up. Man City versus Liverpool at Etihad. This morning we, well, this morning for me, when I woke up, there was a news saying that uh, Cavallo from Fulham deal is done and it will be announced in May. We will talk about that too. Of course, Chelsea got tomped. Uh, they got a new owner by the name of uh, Karim Bazima. Yeah, guys, uh, let's, get, let's get to it. Let's get to it, you know. We don't need to waste any time. Uh, yeah, Liverpool played uh, Benfica in Lisbon, and it was a very entertaining match. Uh, from Jump Street, Liverpool had control of the match. Uh, the lineup was Alisson, Trent, Ibu, VVD, Robo, and the midfield, that was the surprise. Wow, club. Fab, Keita, Thiago. And then the front three, of course, of Diaz, Mane, and um, Salah. That midfield three was a shocker. We've been begging club to see that midfield three for about, what, over a year now? And then this he picked it up. And they did very well. You know, as people can see, the defensive shape of the team was still there. They, they were not, uh, there was no new situation where you could say our, we were fragile in terms of team defense. They marshaled the midfield very, very, very well. I mean, the, from, from the whistle, you could tell Liverpool was going to control the match. And also you could tell Benfica were going to sit back. I mean, they are very good defensively. They have a very good defensive shape. And then they tried to lob the ball forward, but it was not working. Thiago and Keita were controlling the ball. The passes were very well. Uh, Fab had the midfield marshal perfectly. So it gave our uh, back four very, very less to do. And mostly it pushed Trent and uh, Robo up, especially Trent. You know, Trent just got back, so he's still trying to get find his feet. The front three... They were doing well, but we are, we know Salah. Salah is not at a TikTok shape right now. You know, the man has had a lot of matches. It wasn't even just Salah. It was Mane too. You could tell he was half a step off. Diaz was the one who was trying to be an innocent, but he didn't have the help of the other two. So it was very hard for him to do things. You know, the runs that usually Mane would do to create space. But... In all, I was not really worried. I could just tell that two of our front three, they were, you could see sign of fatigue. And because of that, Klopp took them out quick. But let's talk about, you know, the first goal. I mean, wow. I mean, you know, Liverpool, when they are on it, beautiful to watch. I mean, oh, sorry, I'm talking more about the second goal. But the first goal was a corner kick and it was Ebo. The funny thing is people were like, the whole team, have scored, have scored a goal except Ibo. And the only thing he has scored was the penalty kick against uh, Chelsea. And then he rose up, had the ball, goalie could not even move. Second goal, that's what I was getting with. The passes and Trent. Oh my goodness. That ball from Trent to Diaz and Diaz just laid it up perfectly for Mane 2-0. We have the match control. It wasn't anything competitive. They were trying to hit us on a counter attack a few times, but nothing was happening. Second half, it changed a little bit. There was, uh, when they hit us with a counter attack, they crossed the ball from the right. And I mean, uh, they are right, our left. Evil could not clear the ball properly. He, he, he swift it and then they, they got a chance and then they scored. Uh, but after that, that gave them a little bit of. Uh, confidence for them to press us and it destabilized our midfield a little bit so club made a change and took Thiago out and brought in um, Henderson to show up the, the, the midfield make it more compact and more defensive and then up top he took Salah and Mane out and brought Jota and Firmino and because of that now it took us about five seven minutes and then you could see Keita getting back into his groove and controlling the midfield. This guy, to me, he was the man of the match. I know Diaz scored the goal, had an assist, but 
to me, Keita was the man of the match. And then, um, you know, we they, we reorganized ourselves, took over the the midfield and took over the game again. So now, even when they were trying that whole counter attack, kicking the ball over our defense head, it wasn't anymore. It wasn't working. So guess what? Keita got a through ball, passed it through. Otimende clipped it a little bit, so it deflected, and it deflected perfectly in front of uh, Diaz. Diaz dribbled past the goalie and tapped it in. It looks easy, but it's not easy. But yeah, you know, the match itself, it was, I mean, I was not worried that much because that team knew if we open too much, Liverpool will kill us. I mean, they've been in Portugal so many times to play Porto and we have slice and dice them left and right. So they were more defensively structured compared to the many times that we played Porto. So I was not really, really, their striker was, I forgot his name. He scored 28 goals so far. He didn't really bother anybody. The center backs were not really bothered. The only mistake we made from Ibo, and that was it. You know, Salah, yeah, he, he'll play himself out of this situation. It happens. He's done that before last year, same thing. So I'm not really worried about him. But that was the match. Uh, I'm glad we are two goals up. Now, next week, they coming to Anfield. So Klopp will, will just have to manage the game and just finish them off. Uh, City played um, Atletico Madrid and KDB scored a goal in the last, what, 10, 15 minutes. Um, Chelsea played Madrid and, oh my goodness, Benzema, man. This guy, if he doesn't win Ballon d'Or, I mean, right now it's him and Salah for what they've done so far. Um, and they, 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 yeah, it, it, Chelsea had no chance. I mean, they played just like they played against Brentford. They went back four and they got sliced. I mean, I think he even tried to go back three and it still didn't work. You know, right now I don't want to hear anything about Rhys James. Don't tell me he just got back from injury because guess what? Trent also just got back from injury. But yeah, and, and Chelsea was just horrible. Anyway, so next thing we're going to talk about is the Carvalho situation that we heard. We already knew from January that Liverpool made an attempt, but it was too late. So the goal was to wait till the end of the season and then bring him up in you know June or July when the windows open and the transfer window that is. And right now it seems like they strike a deal. A medical was done today and everything went well. So from what some of the favorite or popular uh, newscasters are saying that he it will be announced in January. So I'm sorry, it will be announced in. I mean, that guy, we knew he was coming. And the cool thing with that is he's also, I believe he's also considered as a homegrown. So that helps us a lot. And the kid is special. And with Klopp's tutelage, he's going to be crazy. So I'm really glad that we're getting him. Now, let's talk about the big match that's coming up. City versus Liverpool at Etihad. Uh, to me, this match is uh, win or go home. You can't draw especially Liverpool can draw, we have to win. They can draw, but we can. And if we, if they win, season over. If they draw, season, I mean, league over. But as we are going for the quad, we cannot get anything less than a W. So we have to, we have to, Liverpool has to play so well and eliminate any mistakes. Now, am I worried? No, I know what City is going to do. <laughs> Playing City is two things for Liverpool. Either we win or we lose at this juncture. And I hope that club do not make the same mistake as he did with um, the 17-18 season where we, was something? No, 1819 season where he was, he, he took his foot off the gas a little bit and tried to be pragmatic and then we end up losing 2-1. Uh, this one, I think that we have to go at it. We play as we have been playing. Don't need to be going gang ho with them, but we have to play our game. We have to be, in terms of defensively, when they have the ball, we have to be closer to them so that we can be able to put a little bit of pressure on them. Otherwise, if we have too much space in between us and them, they're going to outpass us and score as much as they want. When we have the ball, we cannot be wasting chances. We've been wasting quite a bit of chances where we are the final third. Uh, I don't think Diaz is going to be there, but regardless whether Diaz is there, last time he was there at Anfield, we scored two goals. So it doesn't matter. Between these two teams, they're identical. It doesn't matter who's there, who's not. 
with especially with these two coaches who are so close to perfection, this match is gonna be crazy. If it's boring, end up being 0 0 1 1, I'll be surprised. I'm expecting goals, minimum 2 1 3 1, regardless where it falls, it may fall. But it's gonna be interesting. I'm so excited. I can't wait for Sunday to come up so that we watch this match. This is a great match for uh, EPL to advertise for the rest of the world. And I hope they advertise it properly because recently they haven't done a great job of that. This is a title de decider. So it is very important that it's very well marketed. And the teams that are going to play, I mean, I know the midfield, I know it's going to be Thiago, Fab, and Henderson. Back three, Matip comes back, slots back in. Uh, Trent on the right, Robo on the left, and of course, the main man, Vat, uh, VVD. And then uh, Allison, the front three now is where we, I think things might be a little bit different. Knowing Klopp, he's going to go with what he trusts. And I know because of that, he's going to go with Firmino, Mane, Salah, especially the fact that he subbed them so early in the match against Benf uh, Benfica. And you could tell it was, it was planned. Regardless of us being up to, you know, up to one, he didn't care. He took Salah and Mane out, you know, and then he gave Henderson a little bit playing time because he wanted him to be fresh and with the momentum, right? So, and then he took Thiago also out. So that tells me he's going to start Salah and Mane because those are the guys he trusts who have been in the trenches. In terms of the third one, I think it's between Jota and Thiago. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Jota and uh, Firmino, but I believe he's going to use Firmino. You know, Firmino has been in these matches so many times, so he know I can trust him. And because we have such a depth in up front, if things are not going well, he could bring Diaz, who is a game changer, and bring uh, Jota, who's also a game changer. The man doesn't need to play well to score goals. So um, this match is going to be crazy. It's going to be so crazy. Uh, on their side, I believe, uh, what's the name? Uh, Diaz is, is, is not fully fit. I'll be surprised if he plays him. So I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be Laporte and um, Stones. And then you got Walker and uh, Koshenko on the other side. The middle three, I know he's, he's not going to go three attacking. He's going to use uh, Rodri, Silva, and KDB in the middle three. And then the front three, I know has, Sterling has been playing well lately, so he's going to get a match. On the other side, it's going to be folding. And then I'll be surprised he might use Grealish as a false nine. I mean, that's why he tried the last time they came to Anfield. They didn't work. But knowing this guy, he might do that again because Grealish has been playing a little bit better. I can see him doing that. So for them, that's the lineup for me. So let's see. I mean, this match is going to be entertaining. I'm trying, trying, trying to go to where the... LFC fan club. Hey, my man, Brute Chips. How about your boy, man? We need to meet up in SF so we can watch this match. That's why I, I, I'll end with it. I'm so excited. I want this weekend to start. Uh, it's it's And also, there's also good games coming up, you know? On tomorrow, ooh, then I need to set up my fantasy team right away. Tomorrow, Newcastle and um, Wolves. That's going to be an entertaining match. Newcastle needs a win. Everton, man, you. Woo! And then there's been some talking between Rooney and Ronaldo. Hmm. Arsenal versus Brighton. Arsenal have too many injuries and that top four is looking very shaky. Brighton and no joke. Southampton and Chelsea. Chelsea is going to be the third loss in the in consecutive three losses. You already lost to Brentford. They lost to Madrid. How are you going to lose to Southampton? Southampton on their day, they are a problem. Ooh, that's going to be so entertaining. Uh, Watford, Leeds, that's going to be also entertaining because they're both fighting for their EPL lives out there. Aston Villa, will Stephen G team stop playing? Because Spurs are getting a resurgence out here. Conte is starting to reach his players, so they're playing well. On Sunday, Brentford and West Ham, that is an exciting match. That is a very, very exciting match. Uh, Leicester, Crystal Palace. Sheesh, there's a lot of excitement. My new, oh my God. Norwich and Burnley. Both of them are trying to survive in this EPL. So that is also exciting, man. And of course, the big one, Man City versus Liverpool at the Etihad. Guys, thank you so much for joining. Please share, subscribe, like, notification bell. Please help us out, get his names out there. We appreciate your watching. 
Uh, whew, please be safe, enjoy the match, and we'll be back on Sunday and we will talk about it. Hopefully, it's Liverpool up. You know what I'm saying? All right, Chrissy Bold, Archie, peace.